Okay, now Brahe's uh, sort of pupil is Johannes Kepler. And Kepler is uh, going to uh, assert the laws of planetary motion. And the laws, the laws of planetary motion will basically state that a planet will move at a speed proportional to its distance from the sun. So here is the sun, and planets that are using Brahe's data, planets that are closer in are going faster, and planets that are farther out are going slower. And he also asserts that basically planets' orbits are not perfect circles, which explains why the planets are moving at these speeds. Once again, using Brahe's observational data, sometimes these planets look like they're going slower than other times. And so what he sees is that planets' orbits are not perfect circles, but in fact are ellipses. Okay, like ovals. And so that is Kepler's. Once again, Kepler's the laws of planetary motion. Now, Galileo is another very important scientist, obviously. Some people regard him as the first modern scientist. Um, he's, he's friends with, over, you know, over writing, he's friends with, um, Gal or with Kepler, so they communicate. And Galileo will be looking at the astronomy as well. He will be credited for the first modern telescope. So he develops a telescope that allows him to see the moon. And he sees that the moon is not a perfect heavenly orb, but it is some body just like the United just like the Earth. <laughs> just like the Earth. And so there will be um, there are crevices and there are dents and there are all sorts of problems in the moon. It's not this shimmering object, but in fact it's just some piece of dirt. <coughs> and uh, he will also point his telescope at Jupiter and see that Jupiter has satellites or moons of its own. And so what this suggests is that a couple of the assumptions of the ancients are wrong. The assumption that these other bodies that we see in the, in the sky are heavenly orbs, perfect heavenly spherical orbs, that's wrong. And the idea that the Earth is unique, it's the only world that we can walk on, that's wrong too. We see that other there exist other worlds, and those worlds <coughs> have, planet, have moons of their own, and so they're their own little systems. So Galileo, with his observational data, uh, and Kepler, with his laws of gravitation, uh, laws of planetary motion, they really show that the heliocentric model is right, and that the old geocentric model of Ptolemy is wrong. Uh, now Galileo is not just important for his observations of space, also for his observations of motion here on Earth. And this is where he really challenges Aristotle. Now Aristotle says that everything is seeking rest. Everything comes to a stop. Um, Galileo finds that, you know, if you roll a ball along a bumpy road, it will come and stop much, much quicker than if you roll a ball along a smooth nicely paved ro road, and if you roll a ball along a like slick road with, you know, greased up, it will roll even longer. So what Galileo finds is that, in fact, things are not coming to a stop. In fact, it's resistance that things are encountered, that things encounter that result in them coming to a stop. And so if you had something that didn't have resistance, it would never stop. It would just keep going. So in other words, 
the motion of things here on earth, things are not seeking their natural place of rest. They're not all coming to a stop. Instead, it's resistance from things that's resulting in things stopping. And Galileo also shows that uh, you know, Aristotle was wrong with his whole how quickly things drop to the ground. And so we did this in class, remember. Things will fall. Aristotle asserts that things fall proportional to their weight. So this piece of paper clearly weighs less, so it's going to fall much less quickly. But remember that Galileo says, well, that's wrong. It's about resistance. There's air resistance. That's what's causing it to fall slower. Uh, and so if you get rid of that air resistance, they'll fall at the exact same speed. Did they? Yeah. yeah. Good. Otherwise, we would be on the verge of a physics breakthrough. <laughs> so now Newton is going to put together the ideas of Kepler and the ideas of Galileo. Now, the ideas of uh, Kepler, laws of planetary motion, explaining how planets are moving. Newton puts these together, and he comes up with um, basically the idea of gravity. Universal laws of motion. And he publishes these in his Principia. Now, the universal laws of motion will basically say that, or the idea of gravity is basically that every body is attracting other bodies. And things are attracting each other at a rate, or at, uh, things are attracting each other proportional to how massive they are. So a larger body, something with more mass, will attract things more than a small body. So we're all being attracted to Earth because it's so massive. And the moon, likewise, is attracted to Earth. But the Earth is attracted to the sun because it's massive. Okay? Now, um, does this make sense? Okay, so that's the big breakthrough. Now... For Newton, what he does is he puts together the explanation for how things work uh, on Earth, and in space, he puts them together. So, in space, it seems like things are different, right? They're not seeking their natural place of rest. They're not coming to a stop. And so Newton says that, well, something, an object in motion will stay in motion unless something stops it. Okay? And an object motion, a not in motion, will remain at rest unless something moves it. Is he the apple guy? Yes, so he's the apple guy. Right? The story is that he's sitting there pondering the movement and the, an apple falls on his head uh, outside in the park, outside where he's studying, and he thinks there is a force attracting this small apple to this huge infinite body that we, or this large body that we're on called Earth. And so that's sort of the, the story, although it's, you know, it's probably not true. Okay, so that is Newton. And so just to kind of explain this just as, as an aside, um, why, is the, why is the Earth not just falling into the sun like the planet Krypton at the beginning of Superman? Why doesn't that happen? <laughs> Because, yeah, because, because the Earth is falling, but it's falling around the sun, right? And so when we look, when we look at the, when we, are, when we drop things, if you drop things when you're stopped, it's going to fall straight to this body. But if you're going along, like in an airplane, and your airplane's going along, what's going to happen is, if you drop the bomb right here, it doesn't go straight down. Things in motion stay in motion. So this bomb that you drop in the airplane is going this way. And so it doesn't just suddenly stop, drop straight down. And so this bomb is going to you know, be released by the airplane, and it's going to be in motion, and it's gradually going to be attracted by Earth down. So would you want to reverse 